Who's ready to retire? I am. I want to get out of this rat race. Now, this is like the fourth take of me trying to have this talk with you right now. And I realize that the reason why I'm struggling is because I'm trying to make it fluffy and pretty and happy. And I'm trying to make it a talk that's like full of gratitude and looking on the bright side. But I don't want to look on the bright side. I want to talk about the effed up nature of us having to be employees and work. So if you're willing to listen to a little bit of a rant, maybe a lot of a rant, please stick around. Still here? Yay. Okay. I've been working since I was 12. I've had a career since I was 30. I've been a teacher for 26 years, and hopefully in the next four or five, I'm going to retire. If I can figure out how to do it sooner, I'm going to do it sooner. Because now as I'm sitting here on a beautiful Saturday morning, it's about 75 degrees at 10 o'clock in the morning. I'm sitting in the park with this beautiful nature around me. In front of me are the mountains of the valley that I live in. I smell green things. There's dogs running around and I'm enjoying being outside and just sitting here talking and thinking. As I'm doing this, I'm realizing that why in the world is the world set up the way that it is where we can't just do what we were originally doing. And what we were originally doing was not hustling. What we were originally doing was not making a living. What we were originally doing was sitting out in nature with our tribe and doing the things we needed to do just to survive making sure we had shelter, making sure we had food to eat, making sure we stayed alive. Very basic things. Now, I, I know that life is more complicated now, and we can't do that anymore. And that's why I'm having this talk. Because although we can't do those things anymore, that's where we started. And that's what we should be doing. And it's frustrating to understand that I've had to, like, do the things that society deems is of value when who are they of value to? They're of value to society, but are they of value to me? Sure, I got some value out of my career. I've I helped to educate hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of students over the course of my career. I understand the value in that, but that has caused me to give so much of myself in the most humongous capacity on a daily basis for two and a half decades. And now that I'm nearing the end of that, I'm feeling the depth of how, of how tired I am. I, I am so tired. I'm so tired physically and emotionally and mentally. And I don't want to be tired like this when I get to actually start my life. So I feel like I've been fed a, um, um, a myth <laughs> that, you know, your life starts when you're 18 and you get to go to college or your life starts when you get married or your life starts when you get your first career, right? Your life starts when you have children. My life starts when my life started. It started the day I took my first breath out of my mother's womb or it started when I became a fetus. <laughs> it started at any, at any one of those points. People have differing views about that, and this video isn't about that. My life started when it began, and I've been living it this whole time. So I, I don't think it's fair that we've been fed this notion that we have to work for somebody. We've been, we've been fed this, this plan that we have to get a job with an organization or a corporation or a business. We have to give of ourselves until we've given for 30 or 45 years, and then we get to rest. Bullshit. Bullshit. Why do I get to rest when I'm done giving? Why can't I rest and enjoy whenever the hell I want to? Why can't we go to school not to become career ready, but why can't we go to school just to become life ready? Why can't we just become ready for life and be taught that 
there are options beyond corporations. There are options beyond doctor, lawyer, teacher, accountant. Why can't we be taught that artist is okay? Why can't we be taught that thinker is okay? Why can't we be taught that doing nothing is okay as long as you find a way to support yourself? Why can't we be taught that being a nomad is okay? Why can't we be taught that working as a barista at Starbucks is okay? And I'm told that I have to teach this too. I am told that I have to help my students become college and career ready. Why? Why? I want to teach my students that they need to become them ready. Be ready for yourself. Be ready for the beauty of life. Be ready for opportunity. Be ready for when inspiration pops into your brain and you get this idea and you just want to go with it. I want to teach them the skills so that they can be ready for those things. Because now I'm at the end of my career and it was okay. I'm not going to jump up and down and say, I have had the most amazing career. I, I am so proud of my career. I don't want to define myself by, by what I have done in my career. I never wanted that to happen. I've always had a really <clears throat> difficult time when somebody has asked me, what do you do? And I'd say, I'm a teacher. I hardly ever say, I teach. I always say, I'm a teacher. But I'm me. What do I do? I live my life. Like, that's the honest truth. I teach so I have money, but I, I am not a teacher. I don't define myself by that. And I've always struggled with that. I want to retire so badly so I can leave that there. And when somebody says, what do I do? I can say, I enjoy every day. I get up and I read a book and I watch TV and I have tea and I learn how to crochet and I take a walk in the park and I look at the birds and I smile at people when I walk on the street and I'll put on my headphones and listen to music and I'll sleep and I'll cook healthy food and I'll talk with the people I love. And some days I don't want to see anybody and I do absolutely nothing. Like, that's what I want to say. What do you do? I do me. I do life the way I choose. And I've known inherently since I was a really little girl that I wanted to do life my way. I knew from that time that I didn't want to be an employee. When people used to ask me when I was a young kid, what do you want to do? I, I didn't know. I had no idea. There was a point in time for a brief time where I said, I want to be a chiropractor. Just because my dad had mentioned the word to me and told me what it was and I thought it was cool for a minute. It was an interesting word. But I had no idea. Like, I knew it had to do with helping people and, you know, I, I've always liked helping people. But I've never wanted to be a thing. I've just always wanted to be me. I'll give you an image to think about. In the summers when we would go to the community pool and everybody was jumping in the water and splashing and girls were having, you know, sinking to the bottom, sitting crisscross applesauce and having little tea parties or swimming or whatever. I just wanted to float. I was the one who would lay on my back and float until water came splashing on my face and woke me up or woke me out of that meditative state. I just wanted to float. It was peaceful and it was easy and it was quiet and I enjoyed the stillness and I enjoyed the calm. I wasn't made for this rat race that we call career and, you know, proving yourself. That's never been me. I never wanted to be the best mom. I, I never wanted to be in the mom group and, you know, compare what our kids were doing. I never wanted any of that. I just wanted to, to let life come and do it as, as it, as it came my way. 
But instead, what we find ourselves doing is like constantly striving to meet the expectations of other people, to meet the expectations of our parents when they ask us and we're kids, what is your goal in life? You need to have some goals. And then when we're in school, meet the expectations. And then when we have a job, meet the expectations. I'm 55 and I am tired of meeting other people's expectations. I just had a review, a job review, uh, not my personal review, but a review of our process at the school where I teach. And I like did all of the things that they were expecting and I worked really hard to be prepared for it. And, and afterwards, they came back to me and said, thank you. You were one of very few people, at, teachers at this school site who is doing everything that we expect. Thank you for, you know, your focused attention to your job. I, I don't know. Like, that was nice to hear that I was doing what they wanted, but it didn't make me feel special or valuable because it's not what I want to be doing anyway. Also, because the amount of work I have to put in to do the job at the expectation that they're asking for is way more work than I think that it really takes to teach a bunch of kids about how to live life and be ready for the world. It shouldn't take assessment and it shouldn't take spelling tests and it shouldn't take reading logs and it shouldn't take task switching every 15 minutes and it should just be like taking them out in the world and letting them play, and letting them float in the pool, and letting them find themselves, and letting them learn how to be nice people. Anyway, I am getting really close to retirement, and I really want to retire. I really want to just come to this park every day and sit for a while and watch the people. I want to crochet, which is so funny because... When my mom retired and started knitting, I laughed at her. Not in her face. I just, to myself. And it made me sad. I thought, that's all that you want to do? She had her reasons, and I'll talk about those reasons at another time. But um, I was sad. I'm like, God, I don't, I don't want that to be me. But now I'm here, and I understand why. Like, just slow the F down. I just want to slow down and sit and make something and find value there. My mic is on, so I don't know if you can hear the birds, but there's beautiful birds chirping right now, and many of them, it's just beautiful. I don't get to hear that during my day because I'm stuck in a classroom all day long. Like this isn't how life was supposed to be working our butts off until we're in our 60s. It's supposed to be like looking at all the colors. It's supposed to be hearing all the things. It's supposed to be creating something. Whether you're creating food or life or shelter, but it's not supposed to be working this hard for other people. I'm sorry that I have ranted this whole time, and it's not that I'm not grateful for what I have had. I am very grateful, but but I've been always that good girl who, like, on the outside lets everybody see that I look on the bright side and everything is great, and I've always been that goody-two-shoes girl, and we're not like that. Like, that's not the truth of who we are. We all get through this world with like shit that we hold on to and that we have to let out. And I'm happy to be like encouraging and positive and helpful. I, that's, that's mainly what I want to, how I want to live my life. But I, I can't do that and ignore that there are things that I'm still mad about. So I'm making this video for me to get it out, and I'm making this video for you because I know some of you have a hard time get it, getting it out because of the expectations of being a happy, respectful, kind, loving human being, when really inside, you're mad. 
I'm mad. I'm mad at being forced to live life this way. That nobody else taught me that there was another way to live life. I, I'm, what I'm really grateful for right in this moment is that I figured that out in enough time to tell my own children. Because my son, who is in college studying philosophy, people told him, what, you, you're you not going to, what are you going to do, teach? <laughs> like, that's all you can do, be a philosophy teacher, professor? I mean, maybe he will. But he already figured out that he doesn't want to take a corporate path and a corporate job. He briefly thought, oh, I'll study philosophy and then I'll go into politics and try to help society that way. And then he realized, but wait, no, <laughs> that didn't fit him either. He's decided he just, he wants to be a philosopher and he'll earn money however he earns money so that he can be a philosopher. That's where I have feel successful. And that's where I feel like I've made a difference in my own child. And he's going to live the life the way he wants to and then pass that on to his children or to the people he surrounds himself with when he gets to that age. And my daughter, she's a little bit younger. She's really interested in sociology and learning about people. Also, that's when she's 19. She doesn't know what she wants to do. I'm not pushing her to know. I'm asking her to explore, be open to whatever, meet people, have experiences, and through doing those things, you'll figure it out. But I'm not, not, not going to push my children to get a job so that they can give their life away. I'm going to tell them to do the thing that they love and find a way to support themselves. I'm teaching them to put their money away now. I'm teaching them to make, to have savings and use that savings towards investment. And I'm willing to let them live with me for a period of time if that's going to help them. But they're not going to live the life that I lived. So I'm grateful that I figured it out and that I can give to them what I didn't get. That's the beauty in this. If I'm going to turn around the rant into something fabulous, my children aren't going to succumb to um, hustle culture. I'm not going to let them. And what I'm going to be doing over the next few years is figure out some simple, fun ways to support myself when I'm retired. I'll have a pension and that will, that will be my regular income and I'm looking forward to that. But I don't want to hustle, yet I do want to create. I don't want to hustle, but I do want to be of service on my terms. <laughs> on my terms. I just got tired of listening to my own voice for a moment. <laughs> Live life on your terms. If you're in your 30s or 40s and you're in the middle of a career, I understand if you can't just like leave it and I'm not telling you to like leave everything behind. No, no, no. I'm just telling you to think about how, uh, actually I'm not telling you to do anything. This is kind of about me. <laughs> if you get inspiration from me, fine. But understand that what we're all doing isn't natural. And if you have the opportunity to, find ways during your day to bring our natural state of being back into your life, because I think that people will feel better once they start doing that. I'm going to leave a little disclaimer because I just feel like I have to. I'm not a specialist in anything, so um, what I'm sharing with you is just my thoughts. Um, there's not 
and there's no expectation that you do anything and the choices that you make for your life are your own and um, this is just my my thinking and how I want to live my life yeah I think we're gonna leave it there if you stayed this long thank you uh, this is kind of like longer than I've talked in a while, but I, I needed to get it out of me. Thanks for being here. Love you. See you another time.